Hello ladies and gentlemen, Scare204 here, and welcome back to a brand new kind of uh, tutorial micro series, I guess you can say. This uh, series here is centered around trying to give you guys different assets that you can combine together to create um, military bases or military uh, themed scenes. Um, it's kind of a step away from my traditional vehicle building, but I think this will be a really good way to, you know, draw in some, uh, some new viewers with some uh, interesting stuff that they can add around their military bases and kind of beef it up give you guys something to kind of build with my vehicles and not just have my vehicles and actually build a base maybe around um, some of my models I have for my you know modern vehicles this one here is going to be designed for modern uh, though some of these designs I guess you could use for World War II or you know Cold War um, mostly probably Cold War but you can use some of these um, definitely for sure for those other scenarios but this here is going to be strictly focused on a modern uh, base that we're going to go ahead and build a bunch of assets for and hopefully combine them all at the end to create a cool base. Now this video is going to be organized into different sections depending on what you want to build. You can see here we have a bunch of different builds so I would strongly encourage you to go ahead and take a look at the video description and also that time encoder bar to familiarize yourself with the different sections and kind of be able to pinpoint where you want to go and skip ahead to. Um, like I said, there are going to be quite a bit of fortifications here, and some of them you may want, some of them you may not want. Uh, again, it's just there to give you a wide variety of different assets you could use. You obviously don't have to use all of them. Um, and again, as I said, the main goal of this at the end is to be able to combine all these assets through multiple parts to go ahead and build a base. Now, this is the first part, and this is going to be covering mainly the outer fortifications slash the walls. Um, we're going to have different parts later on, which are going to cover how to build some bunkers and some stuff that you can incorporate into your defenses, uh, watchtowers, and then even the meat and potatoes of the base, which is going to be your tents and uh, maybe like some small vehicle uh, warehouses and uh, buildings and stuff. So uh, it's definitely going to be pretty cool and it's going to be something that we're going to slowly expand upon and uh, hopefully have quite a bit of parts and eventually at the end you'll be able to combine them all to build a military base yourself. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and just kind of dive into our um, assets real quick. I'm not going to go ahead and talk about a lot of a lot of them in detail, as the goal is to talk about those more in detail for each part. So starting off with, we have a little uh, you know draw gate or opening gate that you can you know open up and allow vehicles in and out. I feel like it's pretty uh, stereotypical to have one of these for a military base, so I went ahead and designed one of my myself, and I think it looks pretty cool. Next to it, we have a little guard shack. Um, which is pretty cool. Then we have some uh, anti-vehicle defenses, so hedgehogs, um, some dragon's teeth, and also just some uh, various other little obstacles that I've seen uh, in some pictures. So again, those are kind of designed for anti-vehicle purposes and all that kind of things. And um, you can build some of them, maybe all of them, who knows. Uh, but those will be all included. Then we have a jersey barrier. This is one of your typical things you're going to definitely see at any U.S. Uh, base if that's what your goal is. Uh, very commonly used uh, to help uh, beef up for uh, areas, especially around where vehicles are going to be entering. So a lot of these jersey barriers are going to look good by your guard shacks. Uh, we then have bob wire. Again, really simple stuff. Uh, I feel like every military base is going to need it, so we have it. Uh, we also have HESCO barriers. Again, something you're going to see a lot used in... Uh, by NATO forces, and especially if you're building like an Afghanistan or a Middle Eastern themed little base, this is going to be a really important part of that. So uh, we got HESCO barriers, then we have uh, sandbags, again pretty self-explanatory. Then we have uh, three different sets of walls, so we have some kind of like uh, larger, more intimidating walls here. Uh, that you can build in different heights. Then we have kind of a more closed off wall with some barbed wire, and then we have a like chain link fence type design, again with some barbed wire on it. So uh, you have a lot of different options here, and this is again gonna be perfect uh, builds to accompany your outer surroundings around your base. Uh, but without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and move into our first uh, build, which is gonna be this little um, lift gate. And I would again strongly recommend you take a look at those chapters and the video time encoder bar and skip ahead to wherever you want to watch and uh, what are the what parts of these you want to take from it. With that though, let's go ahead and dive into our first little mini build. So our first little build here is going to be this little lift gate. Uh, again, a very iconic piece I feel for most uh, military installations. So you have this little uh, you know red and white pole that could be lifted up and uh, allow vehicles through. Good thing about this design is you can extend this however you want. So you can go ahead and uh, make it longer, make it shorter, whatever, depending on how big of an entrance you have. Uh, you know, probably with my tanks, I'd make this a little bit longer, but again, really kind of up to you. Now to build this, it's pretty simple. We're just going to place down a stone block here and then an anvil on top of that. We want to wrap three sides of the anvil uh, and birchwood signs. 
and then on top of the anvil itself, we're going to place down a daylight detector and turn that to that night mode. We're going to place down a quartz slab coming off the anvil, then a red nether brick slab, and we're going to alternate this pattern for however long you want to go out to the side. And we'll go out there to about that point there. We're going to go ahead and place down an andesite wall underneath this uh, slab, a stone full block, and then we want to place down an iron trap door to both sides of that slab. Um, at this point, I would also, for my Java players, we're going to go and type in the command slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick so this command here press and enter will give you this glowing stick you can left click these uh, trap doors to get selected open false and right click them like so you can also use birchwood trap doors as an alternative to the iron trap doors but the iron trap doors are going to be the better looking block in my opinion uh, but that right there is it for that little um, lift gate and again this is going to accompany really well with that guard shack so if you are wanting to uh, combine those two I would uh, strongly recommend it, so it will look pretty cool. Uh, but that's it for our first build, and we'll move moving on to our guard shack. Moving into our next build, we have our guard shack. Our guard shack here is pretty simple. We're going to go ahead and start off by just placing down a oak wood log, and then we're going to place down one, two, three, four, five strip birch wood across, and then another oak wood log. This is meant to represent some like uh, wood pl uh, wood planks, and then also like plywood um, across the side here. Um, it's meant to be kind of like a fully wood structure, if you kind of get what I'm trying to trying to say. Uh, we're going to go ahead and place down two gray concrete blocks here on both sides for the door. You can also just have it on one side if you want, but for us, we're going to go and do it on both. Then we're going to place down two more stripped birch wood, like this. Then another oak wood log to both sides, and then a row of stripped birch wood across. And this here is going to be the side that's going to that would face towards your entrance, and uh, this would be the side that faces away from it. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to go and take our uh, oak logs and we're going to go ahead and build up on this side here. One, two, three, four, five. And over here, same thing. One, two, three, four, five. So it's the side opposite of where we're going to have our doors. On our side, uh, this side here, we're going to go ahead and build up one, two, three, four. And over here, one, two, three, four. We're going to go ahead and then build a row of oak wood logs across to connect the two pillars together on both sides and then to connect these pillars together we're going to place down a row across and also up here in the front as well. We then want to place down a row of stripped birch wood so one two three four five on top of this one. We'll place down a lever on the two side blocks and one right there in the middle. In the spaces in between the levers we're going to place down a spruce wood trap door and then we're going to place down a row of five of spruce wood trap doors across the levers and trap doors. We'll then fill in the uh, space in here with just a row of three of black stained glass in the middle and then we're going to place down our stripped birchwood uh, blocks going up on the sides there like that to go ahead and create that um that front window then on the sides here we're going to place down our two stripped birchwood blocks on both sides and we're going to go ahead and then take our uh, gray or black stained glass we're going to place down two blocks going up so a two by two window and then we're going to go ahead and take our gray concrete and we're going to build uh, basically a two by four gray concrete uh, block like that for our door which will be accompanied with a tripwire hook on both sides there. For this back wall we're going to go ahead and take our strip birchwood and we're going to build this uh, row of strip birchwood up just like this filling in that back wall completely. I also went ahead and kind of added like an alarm system or like a siren I feel like would be kind of an important thing to have here. Um, so this pretty straightforward stuff we're just going to go ahead and place down a polished anesthetic block here on the back. Then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and uh, eight stone brick walls up. You can kind of build this however you guys want uh, in terms of height, but for, I'm going to go up this high. I'm going to go ahead and place down two polished andesite blocks, and then an anvil, and then we're going to place down a wither skeleton skull to both sides of the anvil, and then a polished blackstone button on these two sides here. So that's going to pretty much complete that. It's really straightforward and pretty easy. So that's going to create that right there. Um, then we're going to go ahead and do our roof, which will be done using polished deep slate. We're going to place down a row of slabs across the back here and overhang it by one to both sides. So you have two on this side and six on the other side. We're going to go ahead and place down another row that's going to go all the way across. So just like that. And then for this section here, we're going to go ahead and place down a full block of deep slate on both sides. And then polish deep slate up downstairs. Again, to both sides here. And we're going to fill in the space in the middle here. We can go ahead and use top slabs or uh, full blocks. Either one will work here. Then we want to place down our stripped birch wood. We're going to place down two blocks here to both sides. 
And then we want to place down two rows of our polished deep slate going all the way across the top here. And same thing will be done right here. So just like that. And then for uh, the front here as well, we're going to place down a row of strip birch wood going all the way across that space there in between those logs. We're going to go ahead and place down a row of seven of our polished deep slate and then a deep slate upside down stair to both sides. And then we're going to place down a row of polished deep slate top slabs all the way across uh, to go ahead and finish off the roof there. And the very last thing I have for you guys for this uh, little uh, guard shack here is going to be the addition of um, these uh, banners here. Uh, very simply, uh, they're basically two black banners uh, with uh, gray. So we're going to have two black banners. We're going to do gray splitting the banner in half on right side of one banner and gray splitting the banner on the left side of the other. Then for both banners, we're just going to place down a black or a gray line across the top there. And that's going to complete those the look form and that's going to go on both sides here of these doors so this door here and this one here to kind of create a little window on the door and I would also recommend doing it on the inside too if you uh, you know want to make the inside look a little bit more uh, visible but yeah that right there is it for uh, that little guard shack there so pretty straightforward and simple stuff and you can come up to it and all that it's again a little scaled a little big because it is meant to uh, go with my two to one scale build so uh, but yeah that right there is pretty much the little guard shack and with that, we'll go ahead and start moving into our anti-vehicle uh, fortifications. So moving into our anti-vehicle fortifications, we're going to be going ahead and starting off with this uh, first one. It's uh, pretty uh, straightforward. It's just kind of like some like metal uh, framing type design, and um, that's really about it. I don't know the exact name of it, but it is designed to be a vehicle uh, kind of fence, I guess you can say. So we're going to start off with placing out a birchwood fence post, and then we're going to place down an end rod across from it, and then another fence post. We're going to go ahead and place down an end rod coming off these fence posts here. We're going to go ahead and go one, two, and three spaces over. Delete those first two fence posts. And then we're going to place down an end rod coming off that fence post there. And then a fence post here, end rod, and then an end rod in between them. So it should look like this here for your base. Above these uh, end rods, we're going to place down a fence gate. And we're going to open this fence gate toward the inside here of this, uh, this barrier. And then we're going to place down a birchwood fence post on top of the fence gate. After that, uh, we want to go and then place down an end rod that's going to go across or come off these uh, fence posts like that. And then we want to place down a fence gate that's going to be above this midsection and we're going to have this basically just sit uh, between these, between like that where these end rods would all kind of connect in a cross pattern. On the top here, we're going to place down a row of skeleton skulls. So just like this across, top here, like so. And then after that is all done, uh, we have this section here. You can either go ahead and place down uh, some skeleton skulls, come off these fence gates. Um, however, for Java, we can kind of take that above and beyond. We can place down a block right next to that space right there. And we can place down a lever coming off of it. And we can go ahead and grab our debug stick, which can be obtained by using this command here, slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick, and press and enter, you'll get this glowing stick. What we can do is we can left click this, uh, lever to get selected facing and we can rotate this around to actually connect up to those fence gates and then we can also left click this and do selected power false and right click this like this on both sides to actually uh, set them like that so kind of a cool way to do that and again this could be done either with skeleton skulls or the levers but obviously the levers here are going to be your preferred method that's going to do it for our first anti-vehicle uh, countermeasure and we'll be moving on to our second one our anti-vehicle uh, fortification number two here is going to be the Hedgehog. Uh, hedgehog, obviously no stranger, uh, very iconic piece of uh, equipment. Uh, and also one of the most difficult, I would say, to represent in Minecraft. But I think it did our job here and we'll get started with it. We're going to place down a polished uh, deep slate uh, wall like this and then one over here with space of one in between them. We're going to go ahead and then place down a dark oak wood fence gate between those. A polished deep slate top slab going back, and then a wither skeleton skull here on the ground. Uh, we're going to go, ahead and go on top of this uh, trap door. We're going to place down a full block, and then a slab forward, and then a wither skeleton skull like that. Then we just want to go up from this block, go out to the sides with a polished deep slate wall to both sides like that, and that's going to create the hedgehog. Really simple uh, looking design, and something again you can really incorporate uh, and 
kind of any era, honestly, because they're still widely used today. Um, but that's it for that, fortifi that fortification, and we'll move on to our third. Our third fortification here is going to be pretty straightforward. It's just going to be using some birch wood fence posts and some end rods. Again, designed to just be some metal rods welded together to, um, you know, stop or damage vehicles if they try to go through. Again, kind of more of a lightweight um, fortification. For this, we're going to go ahead and place down a birchwood fence post like this, and the fence post that goes up, and then one that goes down, and we're going to kind of basically do a, um, you know, angle like that, so it's going to kind of form an X shape. We're going to go ahead and then place down an end rod coming off the center fence post, out to the side, and then one, two, three across and then we have our other fence posts here and then we're going to go, ahead and go down to the sides and then we want to go ahead and then go up and out to the sides there and then one end rod come off this fence post like that and that's it really simple again easy uh, fortification to add and that's going to complete that one and we have our next uh, anti-vehicle fortification here which will be the dragon teeth Moving into our Dragon's Teeth, I have about three designs for you guys. Um, again, really straightforward stuff. Uh, we're going to start with a stone block here, and we're going to go ahead and then place down andesite walls around that stone block like that. We'll also place down a skeleton skull here in the corners, all the way around like so. Then we're going to place down another stone block on top of this with iron trap doors around the stone block. And then we want to place down a skeleton skull on top of that block there. We're also going to go and take our debug stick and we're going to go ahead and um, activate these trap doors. Your debug stick can be obtained by typing this command in here slash give at p minecraft colon debug underscore stick. Um, so pressing that command will give you one of these glowing sticks. You can left click this uh, trap door and we're going to go and select it till we get selected open. We'll go ahead and right click that to true and it'll close those trap doors around that. You can also use birchwood trap doors as an alternative. Our next dragon teeth pairs are really simple. They're a bit smaller. Um, we have a stone block and then an andesite wall. And that's it for that one. And then a stone block and a skeleton skull on top. So really simple stuff. Um, but again, you can kind of combine these in different rows and stuff like that to really create some cool, uh, cool effects to them. So that is going to be it for our uh, dragon's teeth. And we'll be going ahead and now moving into our... Um, Jersey Barrier. Moving into our Jersey Barriers, I again have uh, a couple designs here for you guys. Uh, Jersey Banners or Barriers pretty straightforward. We're just going to place down a row of five of stone blocks, um, just like this, and then we're going to place down another row of five on top of those. We're going to place down five like gray stainless panes across the bottom here on both sides, and then we're going to place down a flower pot to both ends on top of those stone blocks. I also went ahead and uh, built some banners here. So we have a light gray banner with a yellow stripe across the top. And I went and put ahead and put them on the side here just to kind of give them like a caution look or, you know, uh, something like that. You can change them to red or blue, whatever you guys want to do. Um, you know, blue might be good for like police and red might be good just for like, you know, danger, stay out type stuff. So you can kind of play around with the colors and, uh, you know, again, use these for different applications and scenarios. Now, our uh, next jersey barrier, again, kind of more designed to be a little bit more of a column, um, but it's a kind of a, just a stack of two stone blocks, a flare pot on top, and then we have this uh, banner that has basically two yellow stripes, so a light gray banner with a yellow stripe on top and bottom on all four sides. Um, so, again, just kind of simple, and again, I chose yellow because it's kind of a caution or warning color and also just a kind of a high vis color as well so um, that's pretty much it for that really straightforward and that is going to complete what we have for our jersey barriers and we'll be going ahead and moving into um our bob wire our bob wire is pretty straightforward i did do a tutorial a little while back where i went in detail doing a bit more um in terms of bob wire and stuff it was designed a little bit more toward world war ii bob wire setups but you can definitely apply it to um basically uh you know, modern military standards is bob wire really hasn't changed too much. So I highly encourage you to watch that video if you do want to kind of see a little bit of something more in detail. But this is just designed to be a very modern and basic set of bob wire and I wanted to include it with this tutorial. Uh, we're going to place down a spruce with fence post and then a flower pot on top of it. And then we're going to go ahead and place down a row of one, two, three chains. I would probably go about three chains. You can go a little bit further if you want, but three is probably the good sweet spot. And then we're going to place down another row of three of chains coming off that flower pot. We're going to go ahead and place down a uh, spruce fence post here and then a flower pot on the other side and that's that's it for the ball wire. It's really simple and what's cool about this design is you can also use it on each one of our walls um, if you want to as well. So again, you get some playability. You can add it onto uh, some of our other objects as well to, you know, just kind of spice them up a little bit. Uh, but that's it for our bob wire. Let's move on to our HESCO barriers. 
Our next segment here is going to cover HESCO barriers, and these here are kind of something I want to spend a little bit more talking about as uh, they're pretty cool in terms that you can kind of stack them together, create some pretty cool sta shapes and fortifications with it. They're basically like building blocks, um, like I guess giant Minecraft blocks that you can build walls and different kind of fortifications and bunkers and stuff like that uh, with, which is pretty cool. Um, and we have uh, pretty simple designs here for them, but you can kind of see here some examples where I went ahead and combined them together where I went ahead and stacked them and you can start to create some pretty cool little um, little uh, obstacles or little fortifications especially for like some forward operating bases and stuff like that and this one even I put some bob wire on top here again to give it that extra little bit of fortification um, but you can combine these with like our chain link fences or our walls and stuff and just really create some cool scenes so that is uh, basically what we have there for that and to build this it's really simple a standard standalone uh, box is just going to be basically a um, two by two by two cube and then we're going to go ahead and place down spruce wood trapdoors on the sides here of the blocks so again all the way around we have our spruce wood trapdoors to form the outsides and then uh, we can go ahead and also for a little bit of detail maybe some stone buttons for like some bigger rocks or something on there um, but yeah all you would have to do to connect it is you would just basically break those and just kind of extend it by another two by two blocks and then you can just place your spruce wood trapdoors. So again, you get a lot of playability with this uh, type of fortification and you can again stack them like Legos and create some cool uh, fortifications here using those blocks. So that's uh, basically Hesco Barriers in a nutshell. Pretty straightforward build and uh, we'll be now moving into sandbags. So moving into sandbags, uh, they're pretty, again, straightforward and really easy to kind of do. I like to use end stone brick for sandbags as I think it's a perfect representation of them. Uh, but basically, you can really do whatever you want shape-wise with sandbags. That's what's cool about them is you get a lot of playability and how you can go ahead and place these. You can see I have some taller walls where they're kind of stacked uh, and some shorter ones as well. So you can definitely combine these sandbags with like our jersey barriers, HESCO barriers, and really create some cool little... Um, little defensive positions I guess you can say um, but with that let's go ahead and dive in here to um, building up these uh, these uh, sandbags so just kind of for some examples here you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing but I just want to kind of provide you a baseline for what I do for mine we'll go ahead and place down two blocks I'll kind of create a curved one so it kind of looks like that maybe you have a machine gun right here and it's guarding the front gate or something um, but yeah pretty uh, straightforward and I'm going to go ahead and add a row of slabs across the top there just to kind of give it a little bit more height there um, then I would just go ahead and just kind of place some slabs and stairs around it just to kind of show like some sandbags on the ground. I don't like to make these like super neat looking because sometimes they are, but other times they're, they're not. And you can just do that to kind of add some, uh, texture to it. And even if you wanted to as well, you can take some spruce wood fence posts and kind of create some like stakes, which kind of help support the, uh, the sandbags. So you can kind of put those in there to help look like it, uh, supports the sandbags and they kind of are stacked up against it so uh, some things you could do there for that and then for a straight one obviously the kind of same concepts apply except you're just going to do a straight row another slab row on top and then we're just going to place down you know maybe some stairs slabs here um, you know getting mixed up a little bit uh, you can even kind of you know have one side maybe broken down a little bit so kind of put a stair there uh, but then again we can do the same technique we did before and maybe have our these like fence posts here to kind of show the supports there uh, for the sandbag. And those are especially going to be important if you're building these bigger kind of uh, segments, these taller segments. You're definitely going to want to have like these fence posts in here to basically show support because sandbags obviously are not a very sturdy uh, structure once they are kind of stacked up on top of each other. So it's important that you show that, um, that they have supports there so that they're not going to just fall in on themselves. Um, but yeah, something you can do there, um, definitely a very useful uh, design uh, with the sandbags. Uh, that's going to conclude everything we have for sandbags and let's go ahead and move on to our first wall design. So moving into our first wall design, it's uh, pretty straightforward. They're basically just concrete slabs um, stacked vertically and they are lined up next to each other to form some pretty uh, intimidating walls. To build it, it's really straightforward for me. I like to randomize this to kind of break up that uh, you know solid stone color. So I went ahead and placed down a row of four uh, of stone uh, and andesite. So I like to mix in the two. And what's cool about this is you can build it however how you want. So you can have it shorter or you can have it taller. Uh, for me, I'm going to go ahead and build this uh, probably about like a mid sized one. So we'll say maybe about here is where I'll stop. So just like that. And we have our randomized andesite in there just to add a little bit more texture. 
We're going to go ahead and then place down a rows of blocks on the bottom in the middle of two spaces on both sides. And then we're going to place down an andesite wall to the sides there. We'll place down stone andesite stairs on top of these blocks right here. And then a skeleton skull can mop the blocks to the side there to go ahead and finish it off. So again, really straightforward stuff. And that's pretty much it for the wall design. You can also go ahead and add a uh, bob wire to the top of it as well if you do choose. But for us, we're just going to go ahead and leave it without. And again, you can stack these however high you want. So you can make them taller, make them smaller. Um, again, this is probably about the smallest I would go based off the uh, realistic uh, looks of these things. But again, you can pair these up really cool uh, with like, you know, adding these next, coming off the Hesco barrier, maybe defenses and stuff like that. So again, you can really combine these pretty cool to uh, create some cool scenes. So um, that's it for that. And then we have uh, our next fence po or next fence design, uh, fence design number two. So moving into our uh, next uh, design here for a fence, we have uh, this one right here it's pretty straightforward and again you can stack these and extend these however long you want but for me i just went ahead and built this up four blocks and we're going to have uh stone brick walls here on the sides of those like that and honestly you can make this probably a little bit taller and i probably would as well i'd probably go five blocks um tall with it would probably be a good uh look for that wall there and then uh to kind of make it uh you know a little bit more defendable i went ahead and put ball wire on top here so uh for me uh java i went ahead and uh placed down a block here to the sides and I also went ahead and placed down a row of three of chain in between uh, the space here. Actually, I built this a little too far to the side here. But a little space of chain there. And then I went ahead and uh, placed down a lever like this to both sides. And then I went ahead and used my debug stick. Left click this selected face wall. And then we're going to set that to floor. And then we're going to left click this again and rotate these so that they point toward whatever direction is your exterior. So you want the angle of the ball wire to be facing away from the inside of the base. So it's going to kind of be like the anti-scale. So you try to climb up here and you're going to run right into ball wire. Um, so that's going to be the kind of design there. And an alternative to uh, placing those levers, um, you can use fence posts instead. But they're not going to be as kind of cool of a design. And then coming off the fence posts and or the lever, whichever you chose, we're going to place down a barrier block or a structure block, and you're going to place down a lever on top of that block going out to the side there. And in between those levers, we're just going to go ahead and place down some chains as well, and that's going to conclude that uh, design there for that fence. So really cool fence design. Again, I really like the aspect of the, um, the uh, bob wire on top there. Uh, being that little extra defense there and you can do the same design here on top of these stone walls if you want to but uh this here is just going to be the design we're rocking for that uh with that though we're going to move into our last fence design and go ahead and wrap up this uh part one of our military base uh modern military base assets so we have our last uh, fence design here which is going to be kind of designed to be this chain link fence design uh for this we're going to place down uh, basically a stack of another brick fence posts up. I'm probably going to go ahead and go up about the same as this wall right here, so five. And then I'm going to go ahead and place down a row of five here, or row of three of iron bars to the side here. And realistically, uh, these iron bars, I'd probably make this section about five to be a little bit more realistic with how chain link fence are actually set up. So I'm going to extend it just by um, two more blocks than my um, example copy. Uh, but we're just going to place down these iron bars on top here just like this and that's going to create that design there and then we're going to take our another brick fence post and build this up along the sides so like that then um if you are on java we can take our debug stick here we can actually extend the side of the fence post toward the um toward the uh iron bars and it's gonna be a really useful technique here just to kind of fill those gaps um, i've also used signs before in the past so place down signs all the way alongside the fence post there to help connect it and then we'll do the same thing here for the iron bars so again, use your debug stick. Unfortunately, there isn't a good alternative if you are not on Java, but um, again, I would probably recommend signs to help try to at least bridge those gaps a little bit better. Um, you can also do a design here where you have the fence post here, and then you have the glass or the iron bars that just go directly behind them like that, and then you would just build it up normally like this. That's also another option there, but uh, again, this right here is gonna be that best design. Um, then we're going to place down a dark oak wood fence gate on top here, and we're going to open this uh, toward the middle of the fence on both sides here. And we're going to go and take our chains and build a row across for our bob wire. And then we're going to place down a barrier block that's going to come off these uh, fence gates like that to both sides. And then we're going to place down levers 
going up from the barrier blocks. And then we want to go ahead and place down chains across in between the levers, just like that. And same thing up here as well. And once you have that all done right there, that's going to complete the uh, chain or the barbed wire on top of those fences. And uh, that's going to complete our last fence design. And with that, that's going to wrap up um, all the uh, different assets we have to do in this tutorial. Anyways, guys, with that um, all finished, I hope you guys do enjoy this uh, tutorial and kind of this introduction to this new uh, series where we go ahead and build up these, uh, you know, different assets and kind of uh, different segments you can combine together to really put together some cool bases. Like I said, you don't have to use all these assets, but you can use uh, some of these or most of them and create some really cool bases and we're going to slowly expand upon this with building different facilities and, uh, you know, different things that could even be integrated into these defenses uh, later on. So uh, definitely stay tuned for more and uh, if you guys have any ideas ideas for what you think should be included uh, with a modern military base. We may come back and do a part two to any of these outside fortifications if you feel there's some that may be needed or, you know, I'll add them into another part. But definitely feel free to let me know. Um, again, I have plans for doing some little bunkers and some uh, watchtowers uh, in the next few episodes. So uh, definitely stay tuned and of course give me some ideas and I hope to also do something like this soon for a World War II series. So uh, again, uh, definitely stay tuned for that stuff. Um, but anyways, that's going to wrap up this uh, video. Hope you guys did enjoy um, and uh, all that fun stuff. If you guys do end up using any of these designs, I do ask that you guys give me credit for it. This is me thing from a solid build tweet to my channel or this video if this does appraise social media sites. As long as you guys give me proper credit for the build, you're free to for a project you guys are working on and um, all that. Enjoy the build, have fun with it. Um, or enjoy the builds, I should say. Um, with that, though, thank you guys again so much for watching. As always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Gary 2x4, and I will see you guys next time.